and of course our sisters all around the world. Today we especially commemorate the Jubilees of Sister Bernadette and Sister Chris for 60 years and Sister Barbara for 70 years. And we are very grateful to the Sound Beach community for hosting us and for the staff of Sound Beach. And we also are grateful to have Father Bill Cunson on with us And so let us begin. Son of God and Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the wisdom of God and the splendor of the Father. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the light for the nations and the glory of Israel. mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God.
let us pray. In the midst of your temple, O God, we ponder your loving kindness. We look on the face of a helpless infant and see the divine countenance before whom the angels of heaven veil their faces. Today we've lighted candles mm -hmm. we bear from the light of the world. May the light of faith that illumines our hearts shine brightly before the throne of your mercy. And may the fire of charity enkindled in our lives bring warmth and joy to our brothers and sisters. And we ask it through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Malachi. Thus says the Lord God, Lo, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me. And suddenly there will come to the temple the Lord whom you seek, and the messenger of the covenant whom you desire. Yes, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who will endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like the refiner's fire, or like the fuller's lie. He will sit refining and purifying silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi, refining them like gold or like silver, that they may offer due sacrifice to the Lord, as in the days of old, as in the years gone by. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, your servant. 
from the Holy Gospel according to you. Glory to you, o Lord. When the days were completed for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph took Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it had written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord, and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons, in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. And he came in the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought the child to Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in the sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and glory for your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them. And he said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and the rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted. And you yourself, a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. And there was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who are awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. And when they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's Gospel just exudes expectation, surprise, joy, and fulfillment. In a way, it embraces every stage of human existence because we have a tiny baby, first-time parents in the prime of their lives, an elderly watcher looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and an 84-year-old prophetess consumed by the promise of salvation. And this ensemble of characters presents a story full of life, full of holiness, and full of love. How fitting a gospel to celebrate jubilees and jubilaries. How fitting a gospel to celebrate this with all of you. 
For Jubilee is the blessed time, going back to the Old Testament, the Hebrew Scriptures, it is the blessed time to come home, to remember, and to set free. That's Jubilee, to come home, to remember, to set free. It's a time to welcome childhood memories, first feelings of being loved and of being safe, first hearing of a good God, a gentle Jesus, of Mary and Joseph. Early steps, like Jesus, home at Nazareth, growing in size and strength and wisdom, Jubilee is a time to remember. And with Mary and Joseph, to remember the prime of life. Those years of mission, of ministries, all the obediences, all the parishes and counties and countries, all the students. A time to remember faces and the stories of people that we got to know and help and learn from and grow in wisdom with over the years, over the decades. But today's Gospel also invites us to remember and to rejoice with Simeon, with Anna, with two people no longer in the prime of life, period. <laughs> <laughs> but two people deeply, deeply aware of the heart of the living, of what it really matters each year and over all the years. And for our jubilarians, and for most of us here, our eyes have witnessed. God's saving deeds are revealing light to the Gentiles, the glory of the people of Israel. We have seen with our own eyes and our hands have touched the word of life, present in the children, in the women and men we worked with and helped, in our sisters and our brothers, that we have ministered to over the years, we have seen the saving light. And, and we are humbly and deeply, deeply grateful that with Montfort and Mary Louise, that God has chosen us. That God has called us. And that God has used us as instruments of his gentleness, of his grace, of his justice, of his peace. But our religious lives and our Christian life is not over yet. We may Pray sometimes with Simeon. Now, Master, you can dismiss, dismiss <laughs> your sermon. Please. But it's for God, it's for God to decide when our eyes have witnessed here on earth all that God wants us to witness. It's His. And so, with our jubilarians, we remember and we give thanks for each and every stage of life, infant, child, adult, fully mature, and aging. Because, as we heard in the letter to the Hebrews, Jesus became like his brothers and sisters in every way. And he has made holy and kingdom building every stage of life. Every stage. And for what we may still need to be healed of, 
to be strengthened in, to claim in us what still needs to be done. Remember also this beautiful part of the letter to the Hebrews. Jesus, that by his death he might rob the devil, the prince of death, of his power and free those who from fear of death have been slaves their whole life long. Jesus will free us to still give all that he wants us to give. Jesus will free us to strengthen what's still weak, to claim the pieces still unclaimed. May Jubilee then set us free, fully free, to love and to praise and to give thanks. Some 30 years ago, nothing, in, but some 30 years ago, very shortly after I was elected Superior General, someone gave me a card, a very beautiful little card, and the design, the drawing, was by Sister Lucille Campbell, who taught me in the eighth grade, as opposed to somebody else who taught me in the fifth or sixth, sixth or seventh, I'm not sure. She was a child, but nevertheless, <laughs> Barbara did teach me for a year someplace. In there. Anyway, I got this card. Um, and the words on the front were from the letter number one, the first letter of Mary Louise. And it said, I am satisfied with what God wants of me now. And every now and then I come across it, and sometimes I, I'm able to pray it better than others. <laughs> but I really try to pray that. At whatever stage of life we find ourselves, may we be so touched, so filled with wisdom and grace, that with full hearts we can say, I'm satisfied with what God wants of me now. And so I invite the following sisters to come forward. Barbara O'Day, <coughs> Christine Shearer, and Bernadette Sisters, rooted in baptism, you have been called to consecrated religious life in order to live out the gospel values in a radical way. Inspired by the tradition of St. Louis Marie de Montfort and Blessed Marie Louise Trichet, you are about to renew your commitment as a member of the Congregation of the Daughters of Wisdom. Yours is a prophetic way of life that finds its expression in the three vows. And so at this time, I invite you to renew your vows of poverty, consecrated celibacy, and obedience. I, Barbara Day. I, Christine Shearer. I, Bernadette Sasson. Renew, renew my vow of poverty, of poverty which, which calls, calls me to, to a deep sense of interdependence and sharing. I promise to reverence the gifts of creation, to share all that I can with others, and to live a simple lifestyle. I renew my vow of consecrated celibacy, which calls me to a universal and unconditional love for humankind and for all created things. I promise to open my heart to all the persons God places in my life 
be generous and hospitable, and to stand in solidarity with others, especially the poor and the oppressed. I renew my vow of obedience, which calls me to listen attentively to the Spirit speaking to my heart. I promise to try to discern the signs of the times and to respond to them as best I can in order to further God's reign of love. Like Mary, I will strive to be a prophetic witness of the tender love and gentleness of Jesus, incarnate wisdom. And now I invite all the daughters of wisdom to stand if you wish. Sisters, on this of the founding of our congregation in communion with your sisters throughout the world. Do you renew your vows of poverty, consecrated celibacy, and obedience? I, I do. do. Then let us together express our gratitude to God by singing Deo Gratia. <laughs> So, my sisters, my brother, let us pray that our sacrifice will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all the Holy Church. May the offering made with exultation by your church be pleasing to you, O Lord, for you will that your only begotten Son be offered to you for the life of the world as a lamb without blemish, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, 
almighty and eternal God. For your co-eternal Son was presented on this day in the temple and revealed by the Spirit as the glory of Israel and the light of the nations. And so we too go forth rejoicing to encounter your salvation. And with angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Bless So that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, O oh Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night that he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way. When supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. Proclaim in song the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we will claim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. And look, we pray, upon the relation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with this Holy Spirit, that we may become one body, one spirit in Christ. 
And may he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, and especially with the most <coughs> blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Louis de Montfort and blessed Mary Louise of Jesus, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for a favor. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. And be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, and all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. And listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have gathered here before you. And in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. For there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him with him in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We share some sign of that peace. <laughs>
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. And blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that he should enter my life, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And may the body and the blood of the Lord keep us all together unto everlasting life. see death until he had been privileged to welcome the Christ. So may we, going forth to meet the Lord, obtain the gift of eternal life. And we ask it through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I think we had quite a celebration here. That was really strong singing and everything. I, well, you know, at the beginning when I mentioned about numbers, big numbers, when I said that I was invited to come, and I mentioned it was Jubilee right now for Sister Barbara, for Chris, for Bernadette, but then in August for Janine and, and for Diane, uh, and Patricia, and Patricia. Jim Brady, who was the Bursar General, has a mind like that. Within like a millisecond, he added up how many years all that was. <laughs> and I don't know what it was, but it was somewhere close to 300. Something. Anyway, we praise God for all of that. 
for each day, and just each day is so important. So the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And our celebration, this part of it, is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Oh, oh.